I'm Nicole Petalides. Glad you were with us because we have a very special guest live from the NASDAQ. Well, made the debut at the NASDAQ. I can't guarantee that he's actually sitting there. Tony Sage, executive chairman of Critical Metals Corp. So glad you are with us. You are, in fact, at the NASDAQ. European lithium miner, you made your debut, rang the bell there. Tell us about the experience. Why now was the right time? CRML is the uh, ticker symbol. People can take a look at that one as well. Tell us a little bit about the story behind the story. Well, thanks, Nicole, for having me on. Yeah, look, uh, it's been a, a whirlwind. Uh, we've uh, been on this process now for over 12 months, so it's taken a long time. Um, but you go through the, uh, the ecstasy and the relief that, that finally we're on the NASDAQ and we'll be able to tell our story to a different market. Um, yeah, European lithium uh, is the uh, asset that we uh, had from Wolfsburg. It's in Austria. Not many um, people in the world believe that you can actually mine in a, in a country like Austria, but uh, historically they have a lot of mines uh, there and they've still got active mines there. So uh, I, I found this asset in 2012. Uh, it's a fully built mine. Uh, we've got a mining permit. Not many mines in Europe have permits at the moment, so it's fantastic. Uh, the European Union uh, have made lithium and cobalt and other metals, critical metals, so they are pushing for mines uh, to supply the European market. Uh, there's many car manufacturers there that are dying for, for the product. Uh, all the fuss and everything about the world about lithium is, is all about this little product here. Um, very, very valuable um, and uh, we've got uh, a fantastic mine in Europe that we hope to be in production in the next uh, two or three years. Yeah, exciting because as you noted, heavy demand and not enough um, right uh, supply on some of these things. We think about these rare earth materials, you think about where people are looking for some of these things. Um, and also it's worth noting that Critical Metals has actually secured um, a partnership or agreement with BMW. I mean, this is a global automotive powerhouse, BMW. Tell me a little bit about how that came to fruition and the future for, for those kinds of deals for the company. Yeah, well, look, um, most car manufacturers uh, in Europe are scrambling for the product. Uh, we had several of the major manufacturers come and see us, visited the mine. Uh, the one that took the most interest is the one you've just mentioned, BMW. Um, it took a long time though to convince them that the mine uh, was viable, uh, but uh, a, a fantastic partner to have in the future. Uh, we've signed an agreement, they get uh, virtually all of the supply from our mine from 2027 um, to satisfy their needs. As you know, they're a global powerhouse, they do need the product. Uh, in Germany, uh, one of the four or five countries that uh, will not allow internal combustion engine new ones on the road from 2030. So they're really gearing up for a massive push for uh, electric vehicles in Europe and uh, we're, fa we're, we're proud to have them as our partners. Yeah, I mean there's no doubt there that electric vehicles are of interest. You have some countries where more than 50% of the cars are electric vehicles. Here at home in the United States, um, we've seen some slowing in demand. I don't know whether it's the economy, inflation. Um, what say you? What do you think is happening with electric vehicles in the big picture? And where do you see growth? Is it, you know, names here at home? Is it the Ford and GM? Is it a Tesla, like more of a global player? Or is it more of the Chinese vehicles? What do you see happening here? Are, is demand, first of all, is demand coming off that hot, hot moment a little bit? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, actually supply um, uh, has exceeded uh, demand over the last few months. The price of lithium has fallen. But if you look at the, the future, and virtually every research house has said this, there's going to be a big squeeze uh, coming up in the next two years. Our mine isn't open yet. We're going to be open in 2027. So we're going to come right back onto the market with our product at the right time. Uh, China uh, is going to lead the way. Um, I mean, they've got a government that can force people uh, to do electric vehicles and buy electric vehicles. But we're not only talking about that. Everyone concentrates on EVs, but battery storage is a massive industry uh, and you need the lithium ion batteries there. Uh, you've, when's the last time you went out to a shop, uh, a hardware shop and saw a power tool with a cord on it? They're awful. Electric bikes. Uh, you've got the e-scooters uh, e as well. 
they're a massive market and they do take a lot of the supply uh, for, um, for lithium uh, and has been for the last 18 months. So a little bit of a downturn now. It did happen again. It did happen in 2018. Uh, we're going through a similar. I believe uh, it's bounced uh, and most of the market pundits believe that over the next two or three years um, the supply of lithium uh, will not be enough for the demand. So this um, Austrian mineral projects, I mean this prospective area, um, tell me about that because I'm having some confusion about where the mine is, the other projects you're working on, um, you know, are all your eggs in one basket, which is perfectly fine because you did say that that mine will, will be coming out in the next couple of years when, when there will be a big squeeze and people need that lithium. Um, but just clarify what's under the CRML umbrella. Okay, under CRML is our, our flagship project, obviously, is the Wolfsburg project. Wolfsburg is probably 250 kilometers uh, south of Vienna. Uh, it's actually closer to the Italian border, so it's right in that area. Uh, we have super government support uh, from the Austrian government through to the local council. The area where we're in uh, is a beautiful area. Uh, it's a regenerative forest, so all our environmental concerns are gone. Uh, there's a massive logging uh, uh, business nearby, so uh, the, the uh, locals are very used to trucks being on the road. Uh, so, so that's our flagship project. Uh, the next steps for that is obviously financing going forward. But we called it critical metals for a reason. Um, I've been in the business for 40 odd years. I've got, if my track record speaks for itself in acquiring assets. Uh, so we think that um, we, uh, the critical metals will fill that gap in the market here uh, in the US where we'll have a, a flagship project that we'll be producing in a couple of years, but we'll be looking for other projects in the critical metal space, whether it's rare earths, whether it's uranium, uh, graphite, etc. So uh, with the team that I've assembled, uh, we're uh, on the hunt for other projects uh, that will uh, enhance uh, our portfolio. But our flagship project will always remain the Wolfsburg project. It's, uh, it's been around for a long time. It was actually built in the 1980s by the Austrian government. So the actual mine is built. So we don't have to go in there and actually dig holes. That's all been done for us. Uh, previously, roughly saves us $100 million in capex because that work has been done. Uh, and because that work has been done, it was easier to get our environmental permits through. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting future where we are looking for other critical metal projects, but our flagship project will be uh, Wolfsburg and uh, we will continue along the path of financing now and hopefully start construction in the first quarter 2025. Yeah, Tony Sage, Critical Metals Corp, Executive Chairman, thank you so much. It was great to see you. Really appreciate it. Congratulations to you and your team. All right, folks.